Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about how we represent information in digital systems. Specifically, we're going to talk about numbers and number systems, but we're also going to do a couple other example applications of how we represent information. So for digital systems, by far, the most common way that we represent information is with binary or binary encoding. And information, or the symbols that make up the information, are encoded in binary, zeros and ones, or strings of zeros and ones. So for example, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, I would encode some information. Each digit in the binary number has a specific name. We call this a bit, which just stands for binary digit. We also have some common groupings or, or uh, um, group sizes of, of bits that we put together. One of them is called a byte, which is just a group of eight bits. Now, say I had a 16-bit register. I would say a 16-bit register stores a 16-bit word. So a 16-bit register stores a 16-bit word. Word being another common name that we use when we're talking about groups of bits. And a 16-bit word is just two bytes. Okay. Now, for binary encoding, it's going to be important that you memorize the powers of 2, at least up to 2 to the 10. This will come in handy as we go about going more into digital design. So this would be from 2 to the 0, 1, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, all the way up to 2 to the 10. Okay, now there's some common prefixes or uh, denominations uh, that we're going to uh, use in digital systems. So for 2 to the 10, or we'll call this a kilo, 1K, and 2 to the 10, which is equal to 1,024. 2 to the 20 is mega, or 1M, and is approximately equal to 1 million. Giga, capital G, is 2 to the 30 and is roughly equal to 1 billion. These are by far the most common prefixes that we're going to see, but also nowadays that systems uh, have even larger degrees of storage and higher performance. It's also common nowadays to also see Terra, 1T, which is 2 to the 40, 2 to the 50, PETA, and 2 to the 60, EXA. Okay, so why binary? Well, in short, it's because it's easy to build devices uh, that represent and compute on information in binary. So digital devices manipulate discrete information, information that's in a fixed uh, number of states, in the case of binary, just two, zero or one, as opposed to analog devices that manipulate continuous values. So in our digital devices, signals are usually represented with voltages. I have a low voltage, maybe it's zero, and a high voltage, maybe it's three or five volts. And each of these also correspond to our binary values, then high would be for example, binary 1 and low voltage would be uh, binary 0. Okay, so how do, we re how do we represent numbers? Well, one of the most important concepts for representing numbers are positional notation and base R number systems. And even though you may never have heard this term before, you've uh, actually already seen uh, one uh, base R number system, and that's decimal. So 133, we all know what this means. Essentially, it is the value 3 plus the next digit, 3. In the 10th position means that there's three tens. And the digit after that, the 1 in the 100th position, means there's 1 100. And that gives me 133. I can generalize this concept and come up with any number system with an arbitrary base R. So... In this case, if I had, say, the number 345 in base R, I would say that this is equivalent to 5 times R to the 0 for the next digit times the base uh, and to the power of that position, so R to the 1, plus 3 times R squared. Okay? 
decimal is a base 10 number system. Binary, you can probably guess then, is a base 2. And, and other number systems that we use in digital systems frequently are octal, base 8, and hex, base 16. Okay, so, and if I wanted to convert between these, I can do this then. So say, for example, I wanted to take 133 in decimal and find out what's the corresponding uh, representation in binary. The approach you would do here is say, okay, what's the largest power of 2 first that goes into this number? And this is where mem memorizing the powers of 2 helps out. So let's go ahead and write those out. So 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the 4 is 16. 2 to the 5 is 32. 2 to the 6 is 64. 2 to the 7 is 128. And 2 to the 8 is 256. Okay, so obviously 256 uh, is too large, so there's going to be a 0 in that position, but 128 actually goes into 133, so I have a 1 here. I'm going to subtract 128 from 133 to find out what the remainder is. In this case, it's 5. So then I keep going until I find the next largest power of 2 that goes into this. Well, in this case, there's only it's 5, so these are all going to be zeros until I get to 4. And then that leaves me 1. So I have 0 here and a 1 here. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 is the binary representation for 133. Okay, so we're going to go into more, more details of this in the next lecture. But I briefly wanted to mention that there are also other types of ways that we can represent uh, numbers. Another example or a set of representations are called decimal codes. And in this case, each digit in, say, the decimal number is represented independently. So one decimal code that we're going to see and use a lot in the, in the, in the coming weeks is a binary coded decimal. which takes each digit in the decimal and encodes that with four bits in binary. So, for example, uh, 133 decimal, if I wanted to convert this to BCD, would be first digit is a 1, so I have 0, 0, 0, 1. Second digit's a 3. 3 would be 0, 0, 1, 1. And then another 3, so I have 0, 0, 1, 1. This is not the same as the binary encoding. Uh, this is a BCD representation, so be careful with that. There's also weighted codes. Which have a different weight for each position in the number system. So, for example, uh, if there was a, and these, this is a decimal code as well, I'd have the values 8, 4, 2, and say the least significant bit is negative 1, then, uh, then I could represent 133 in this case. So 1 would be represented as 2 plus negative 1, so the first digit would be 0, 0, 1, 1. 3 would be 0, 1 for a 4, and then a negative 1, and the same thing for the last one. Okay. And then there are other uh, decimal codes, for example, X is 3, which is like BCD, except you add 3 to each position. So there are also, uh, we're going to talk more in the coming weeks about other types of representation, specifically for negative numbers, we're going to talk about two's complement, which is important for arithmetic. Uh, we'll talk about gray code, which is another code that allows us um, to have stability when the bits change. For the lab, we're going to see a representation for numbers using, for, and it's specific to the device for displaying them, uh, for a seven-segment display. And then there's also codes for error detection and correction. Okay, now let's look at how we can represent letters for alphanumeric characters. So let's start first with all the lowercase letters. So there are 26, 
lowercase letters. How many bits are we going to need to represent these letters? So if I have n bits, there are a total of 2 to the n possible combinations. So I could have 2 to the n representations. So in the case of 26, if I have 4 bits, 2 to the 4 is equal to 16. So I could represent 16 possible letters with 2 to the 5 or 5 bits, I have 32 possible combinations or strings of ones and zeros. So that would be sufficient for me to represent the 26 letters. Okay, now let's say I wanted to include also uppercase letters and numbers. So in total, this would be 62 alphanumeric characters. So A to Z, capital A to Z, capital Z, zero to nine. How many bits do I need for this? Okay, well, two to the six is 64. So oh, I'm okay with adding one more bit and I can take care of all those characters. Now let's say I add one more bit, two to the seven, gives me 128. And so if I keep adding on to the lowercase, uppercase numbers, also put in some other, this, the other symbols, 32 symbols, that gets me to 94 characters, so seven bits works for that. Okay, so with seven bits, we can actually represent quite a few alphanumeric characters. Uh, given eight bits or a byte is a very common grouping that we're gonna use in systems, it'd be nice if we could take advantage of one more byte. So what could we do with an additional bit? Uh, well, we could use it as a parity bit and doing some adding redundancy for error detection, I'll talk about it in a second, or we could add more symbols. And in fact, there is a common standard for alphanumeric characters that computers use called ASCII. It stands for the American Standard Code for Information Ex Interchange. And it is one byte, although the kind of the old original version of ASCII was seven bits, but then they added on an additional bit and included some 34 or so control characters. And so let's take a look and see what uh, that this table looks like. So if we go to Wikipedia, we can look up ASCII and see, well, there's the original ASCII from 72, in fact. And so if I wanted to represent, say, the letter A, so I'd go in this chart and I'd say, okay, but I want lowercase a, so I'll come over here, look at A and see that I have the binary representation for this one would be 1100001 would be the ASCII representation. Or if I looked at, if I wanted to represent, say, uh, the question mark. So the question mark down here would be represented by in binary 0111111, seven bits. All right, so that's alphanumeric characters. Let's talk a little bit about what if we were to use that extra bit for error detection or correction. Uh, 